Good day everyone. For this video I want to do a couple of example problems where we are doing probability but extracting data from some tables. Okay, so here's our first one looking at kind of store and customers. And so it says the store is gathering some demographic information from their customers. And the following chart summarizes the age-related information they've collected. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this table and I'm going to paste it uh, into Excel. Let's see if it'll do it. Well, let's try this again. We'll paste special, go to text, and click OK. Now I've got a couple problems. It didn't like converting over this 20 and this 50 or this 60 and this 97, uh, but that's not a big deal. We can move those over really quick. I am just going to cut that 60 and paste it in there, cut this 20, and paste it in there, move my 50 up, move my 97 up, delete out those two rows, and I've got my table. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do before I do any of my calculations, I want to know how many people were actually surveyed. So I could just add them up like in a calculator and type it out, but there's a handy function that we can do. We can just type in the sum, right, because that's the summation and then I just highlight everything that I want to add together and I get this 498. Okay, so this first one that it's asking for it's what is the probability that the customer is at least 20 but less than 40? Okay, and how this, this table is working is that this slot is for people who are less than 20. So we don't want them because we need at least 20. So this is 20 to 30 and this is 30 up to 40 but it's actually not including 40. Okay, so those two are, we'll say, uh, at least, we'll say, number at least 20, but less than 40. And we can say that that equals, I'm going to use my summation again, uh, these two um, of my 20 to 30 and 30 to 40. And that gives me 175. Now my probability of this exact same thing, just copy that text real quick, of at least 20 but less than 40, is going to be equal to my 175 number of at least 20 but less than 40, and divided by my total. And that would be the probability that someone's in between those two. Okay, let's look at the next one. What's the probability that the customer is either older than 60 or younger than 30? Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of highlight those groups. There's my older than 60 and younger than 30 is right there. So I'm going to do, let me just copy this little text again. Copy that, paste it there, older than 60 or younger than 30. And I'm just going to say that we'll do the sum of this guy. And then if you actually hold, I do believe it's command uh, on a Mac, control on a PC, we can do those commas. So it's doing B8 plus B3 plus B4. Now you could rearrange those orders. So it's B3 plus B4 plus B8, uh, but we've got 222. And if we want the probability, of older than 60 and younger than 30. That's going to be equal to the number that we had divided by the total again. And it gives us 44. And this last one is what's the probability that the customer is at least 50? So I'm gonna copy that guy, paste that one, and at least 50 Let's make those no color right there, no fill. So at least 50 would be 50 to 60 and 60 and above. So I'm just going to color those guys yellow. And so we can equal the sum of these guys. And then once again, the probability that the customer is at least 50, that is going to be equal to the number that were bigger than 50 divided by the total number of people. Once again, we're looking at the number that we're interested in divided by the sample space. Now we can 
enter and we get this 37. So let's see how we did. So on this first one, 35 or 0 0.3514, that looks good. Next one, 0.4457, that guy looks good. And over here, 37.75, that looks good too. So that's how we can kind of find some probabilities using a frequency table. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, another example. Okay, so in this one, we've got a slightly different table. Uh, this table, instead of just being a frequency table, this is kind of a, a two-way table. Sometimes we call it like a contingency table. Uh, but now we can see that people are broken up into men and women, and they're also broken up into like uh, the speeding tickets of how far over the speeding uh, over the speed limit on I-25 in Colorado. So I'm just going to go ahead and get myself a new sheet. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And first things first, I'm going to copy, let's see if I can copy this whole table. Copy this table, and I'm going to paste it in here. Try to paste it as text, and let's see how we did. Oh, it looks like we did pretty well. Let me go ahead and make this just a hair smaller so we can get all of our text in. And that looks good. And we'll call this just speeding tickets. Okay, so I'm going to do some highlighting here real quick because we have, they have already given us some totals where there was a total for a ticket where it's 0 to 10 miles over, 10 to 20, and more than 20. I am going to highlight those in orange. And I'm going to highlight these guys as orange. And I'm going to do or not orange, sorry, yellow, and then that guy is orange. So the yellows represent what are called marginals. These are the sums of like individual groups, and the orange represents our grand total, or the total number of people uh, in this random sample. Okay, so A says, if a random ticket was selected, what would the probability be that the driver was female? All right, so the first things first, let's kind of write out a little probability statement, and we can say A, what is the probability that they were that the driver was female? Okay, so the probability that somebody is female is actually very easy. We just count all the females that were in this sample. So we've got four plus nine plus five. If you add those together, it's eighteen. And so all we have to do here is just do equals eighteen total number of females divided by the total number in our sample, which is forty-six. And that gives us, there's a 39% chance that somebody who got a ticket from this sample uh, was a female. There we go. All right, let's go to B. Okay, B was uh, given that a particular ticket was 10 to 20 miles over the speed limit, what's the probability that the driver was female? All right, so this is a given statement, and we can write this in our probability statements as well. So probability that they are female given that they are 10 to 20 miles per hour over. So I'm just going to copy that 10 to 20. Okay, so there's a couple ways that, that we can find this. Uh, the first way that, that we can do it is by just looking at, okay, just looking at the females. We're only interested in the females because we're, or sorry, not, excuse me. We are only interested in, given that somebody was 10 to 20 miles over the limit, what's the probability that they were female? Okay, so since we're just interested in this, the number of females there were, were 9 in this 10 to 20, out of the total of 17. So we could do here is just equal to... 9 divided by 17. And so within that range, given that we're in the 10 to 20 mile per hour over, there's a 53% chance that the randomly selected person was female. Now there's another way that, that we can do this, because remember for our given statements, when we have probability of A given probability of B, we can write this as the probability, oopsies, probability of A and B uh, divided by the probability of, oh my goodness, probability, sorry, probability of B. Okay, 
Well, the thing is, is we already have this probability of B. We have it right here. It says 39. We figured out what the probability of B... Oh, sorry. We don't have the probability of B. This is the probability of being female. We need the probability of being 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it looks like we've got a couple things that we need in order to use this specific equation. So if we want to know the probability of B, which in this case is going to be equal to the probability of being... 10 to 20 miles per hour over. That is going to be equal to, we've got 17 divided by our 46. All right, so that's our probability of, of what we called B here. Now, the probability of A intersect B is going to be equal to, that's the probability of female, female, and 10 to 20. I'm just going to leave it like that, 10 to 20. And how we do that, that would be equal to female, and 10 to 20 over is going to be 9 divided by our 46, right? That's where the, both is a female and they're 10 to 20 miles over. Okay, so now if we want to do this probability of A given B, right, we need to do equals this probability of, give me just a second, I'll copy a few things, we'll paste that in, probability of female, that's the intersection divided by 10 to 20. And so we have those as well. Oops, running out a little bit of room. And that is just going to be equal to, here's our intersection, A intersection B, divided by the probability of B. And look, we're given this exact same answer. So this was kind of the shortcut way. I just looked at 10 to 20 over and found the females. And this one, I kind of took like this more mathematical approach of finding the probability of this intersection, finding the probability of B, and then dividing the two by each other. They will, these will give you the same answer. Sometimes uh, when things are really crazy, like doing the shortcut method doesn't work too well. But for our class, most of the time, this little shortcut method that I showed you worked out well. So if you want to see that again, go back and give it another view. Okay, so we're on to part C. It says, see, given that the particular, oh, sorry. Oh, it looks like we did see. Oops. We'll call that C. And it looks like we need to go to B now. We did one out of order. Not a big deal. So B, given that a particular ticket had a male offender. Okay, so given that we're just interested in the males, what's the probability that they were more than 20 miles per hour over? So we have probability that given that we had a male offender, sorry, we write the given after the line. Given that they were male, what's the probability that they were greater than, oops, greater than 20 miles per hour over? Okay, so once again, look at just the males, because we're saying given that they were male, what's the probability that they were more than 20 miles per hour over. So we're going to do this 13 divided by 28. We'll do equals 13 divided by 28. All right, and let's take a pause real quick and let's see how we did on B. We got this 46.4, good. And this one is our 52. Perfect. We're doing great so far. Let's now go on to letter D. So letter D says, if a, if a random ticket was selected, what is the probability that the driver was male? So it says, out of everybody, what's the probability that we just selected a male from this sample? And we'd look at, okay, how many men were there? 28. And we can divide by the sample size. Let's see how we did. We got it. Next one, E. If a random ticket was selected, what's the probability that the driver is female and the driver, the female, and driving 10 to 20 over the limit? Hey, we actually already did this one when we actually calculated this given statement, but let's do it again. So we've got the probability that they are female 
and 10 to 20 over the speed limit. So once again, we would go female and 10 to 20. That's where they cross and divide it by our sample size. And so we get 19. Okay, and we're on to F. And it says if a random ticket was selected, what would the probability be that the driver is female or driving 10, 0 to 10 miles over the limit? Okay, so or is a little bit different. Or, let's do this, probability female or, and when we do or, we do union. And we'll do 10 to, oh, 0 to 10, sorry. 0 to 10. Okay, so remember when we do this, the equation that we are really using is this guy right here. It's the probability A union B uh, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the intersection, the probability of A and B. Now the reason why we select why we subtract off that intersection again remember if we were to just add in the probability of a that would be the probability of female 4 9 and 5 plus the probability of 0 to 10 7 and 4 we would add that 4 twice so this is just to help us to stop from double counting so if we were to do this we would need to do equals the or we'll just do probability of female we would need the probability of 0, oops, 0 to 10. And we need the probability of female intersect 0 to 10. We've already got a couple of these already. Um, we've already have female, and we'll just do it again. But we know that the probability of female is going to be 18 divided by 46. Next one, probability from 0 to 10 is going to be 11, because that's the sum of 7 and 4 for a 0 to 10, divided by 46. And female and 0 to 10 is going to be equal to 4 divided by 46. Oops. Not an equal sign. Divided. There we go. Now what we can do is when we're wanting to put those all together, for this combined one. So we got female union. Well, let me just copy that real quick. That's going to be equal to female plus 0 to 10 minus, and it looks like it's not going to let me click on it, but I can go E24, and that gives me this 54. Now, there's another way that we can do this. If we just want to say or, it just means add together all of the individual accounts uh, where this is true and then divide by the total. So I can do that too. I can do equals the sum and I'm just going to click on everything that I'm interested in. This guy, oops, this guy, and then I think if I put hold command, yeah, it'll let me command or control, depending if you have a Mac or a PC. I can just highlight those guys because those now represent being either female or driving from 0 to 10 over the speed limit. And then I can just divide that by my grand total. And it gives me the exact same value. And let's double check to make sure that we did it okay. And we got this 5434. And that's it. So that's kind of how we can do some of our kind of more complicated um, probabilities and grabbing that information from a contingency table.